very good morning and welcome to our Rugby World Cup update brought to you live from England. Good to have you with us here on Morning Live. Today the ABSA Red Bus, ABSA member of Barclays, is parked at the Old Royal Naval College which is south of the Thames and that's where you get that most magnificent view of London. It all starts tomorrow. South Africa up against Wales in the very first quarterfinal of the Rugby World Cup 2015. I know that everybody is donning their Springbok shirts back home. I can tell you that in the tube we have seen a couple of Springbok shirts too, which has been a very welcome sight. And also heard a little bit of Afrikaans and Zulu, and that's the taste of home that you really do relish whenever you travel overseas. Okay, so yesterday, coach for the Welsh team, Warren Gatland, he named his team to face the Springboks in that very first quarterfinal of the Rugby World Cup. And he named three changes from the side that took on Australia. He's also named a youngster at outside centre, Tyler Morgan. He'll team up with uh, Jamie, uh, with Jamie Roberts, uh, and they hope to contain our very talented centre pairing of Jesse Creel and Damien Dalende. Now, while many people are hoping to see wonderful running rugby and just to unleash the backs it's a lot that's going to ride on what happens with the forwards and just how clever they are the buzzword around both the South African and the Welsh camp when speaking to the coaches has been the importance of the breakdowns and what that's going to mean in tomorrow's quarter final. When is kickoff? When can you set your watches to make sure you don't miss any of the action or you'll be able to catch the build up on SABC2 from 3.30? The kickoff though at home you'll be able to watch it at 5 o'clock. All right, on that note, let's uh, check in with our camp correspondent, Simon Burke, to find out the latest from the Springbok camp. And so the Springboks have finally made it to Twickenham, the largest purpose-built rugby stadium of its kind in the world. It's going to be an epic clash against Wales on Saturday in the quarterfinals of the 2015 Rugby World Cup for a player like Francois Lowe. It's going to be a busy day at the office, at the breakdowns. You know, they are, they are efficient in that area. Um, you know, playing with uh, sort of two so-called open sides. Um, you know, both will have goes at the ball, uh, try and influence and affect the game at the breakdown, both defensively and on attack. Um, breakdown, obviously, as we all know, is a massive area, uh, both for momentum and disrupting the momentum of the opposition. Um, you know, our, our emphasis has always been to you know, to really focus on that area, uh, to get quick ball when we are attacking, to get our cleaners in early, and obviously, not give their, uh, you know, their ball, their ball poachers half a chance to uh, to get in there. And for Coach Heineke Meyer, it's going to be all about keeping an eye on referee Wayne Barnes. No, I think he's been one of the best referees in the tournament. I'm very happy to have him. I, th I thought he's. Uh, when we played with him previously, we conceded a lot of penalties. But uh, what I do like about him is consistent, and um, you know exactly where you stand. And as a team and as a coach, you can prepare for that. You know, as long as they're consistent both ways, um, you know, he knows the law well. But he's also got a great feeling for the game, especially the way the mall. And uh, Francois spoke about the breakdown. We we appreciate what he do for both sides. Is and I think all referees this tournament. If you don't roll away, you're gonna you're gonna concede the penalty. So. If you play positive and keep the ball in hand, uh, you will get penalties. So we're very happy with him. You know we're exactly where we stand. Four years ago, the quarterfinals didn't go as planned for the Springbok team. That'll also be lurking in the minds of the Springboks as they prepare for Saturday. I'm Simon Burke, bringing you the latest from the Springbok camp. And that is the magnificent view that we have from the Absa Red bus. We're at the old Royal Naval College, which is the centerpiece of Maritime Greenwich, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So we heard what the latest is from the Springbok camp. Let's get you up to speed with what else has been happening at the tournament with some tournament news also focusing in on another quarterfinal that will be taking place tomorrow in New Zealand up against France. The Kiwis coach Steve Hansen has laid down the challenge to a France side that he believes lacks the flair of years gone by. My oh my. He said you can see it's there and when they let loose it's definitely there. We'll be expecting them to come out and play with flair and physicality. And then, here's a chance for you to get involved in Rugby World Cup action. World Rugby and Facebook announced an exclusive partnership to allow fans the chance to vote on a brand new category at the World Rugby Awards. And this is the Rugby World Cup 
best match moments. So there's four of them, and I'm going to give them to you. Hashtag RWC Japan, that's for Japan beating South Africa in this Rugby World Cup. Hashtag RWC Johnny for Wilkinson's last minute drop goal to win the 2003 World Cup. And RWC France for France's victory over New Zealand at the 1999 Rugby World Cup. And the other one is uh, RWC Lomu for his bruising performance against England at the Rugby World Cup back in 1995. So those are the four different moments and whichever one gets the most votes will actually get an award at the World Rugby Awards. So something to also get the fans involved which really have stepped up in terms of supporting this Rugby World Cup here in England. It's time now for us to take a break. Stay with us. Get behind Rugby World Cup 2015 on SABC. Our live Rugby World Cup update. Uh, today the Absa Red Bus, Absa member of Barclays, is parked at the Old Royal Naval College. Now two nights ago I went to a wonderful little rugby pub which is just four blocks down the road from the Twickenham Rugby Stadium called Stokes and Moncrief. It's part owned by former English international Simon Shaw and they were having a very interesting evening because it's National Curry Week here in England and they had a curry challenge where they got some of their other former players to also come and take part and see who made the best curry. This is uh, St the Stokes and Moncrief pub. It's, uh, we, we took it over a couple of years ago um, with the idea of kind of bringing back uh, an old school type of rugby pub uh, where people can come to pre-match and come to after games and you know, chat about rugby and, and be surrounded by rugby players. It's National Curry Week here in the UK, so that was the kind of thought behind it, that was the, what sparked the thought off. Um, we, we then had a campaign called the Curry Me Home campaign, which was to incentivise people to start curry nights and watch the rugby. What better way to watch rugby and, 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 and eat curry at the same time? Fantastic. So we did that and we decided, well, let's do it for charity. And that is the Curry Cup, but not quite like the Curry Cup that we know at home. Just tell us who's going to be winning this lovely glass full of uh, jalapenos and uh, chilies. Who's going to be winning? Naturally, I am. Myself and Nick Easter, who are the forwards, and we're playing against the uh, rather pathetic backs. It's not as, quite as grand as the Curry Cup in, in, in South Africa, but we, we modelled it more more along the kind of ashes, cricket ashes, which is a lot smaller, but it's a lovely piece of uh, glassware and, uh, and we'll be taking it home tonight. So as it started out, the forwards were supposed to be doing a chicken tikka masala. It ended up as a chicken saga masala, so that means that they added some spinach in them. And then the backs did a lamb del frazi. All right, so this is the taste test. This is the backs and this is the forwards. Let's go for it. It's got to be all about the lamb. Did you taste the chicken? The chicken one. The chicken one. The, the lamb, any day of the week. Oh man, it had to be the forwards of Simon Shaw and Nick Kennedy beating Andy Gomesel and Ian Bulshaw. But it was just wonderful fun and we also got their insights about the upcoming quarterfinals we're going to be hearing from Ian Bulshaw in a short while. So while I was enjoying curry, uh, my colleague Mac Messino was at a Vodacom media dinner. He also got to enjoy some bultong, but it was more about the conversation. Take a look at what the journalists had to say about the upcoming quarterfinal.
I think Heineken Mayer has been spot on in, in being able to choose, you know, the same the same guys uh, for uh, Luas and Volvo, but JP comes in and JP is looking even better than he was in 2007. Yeah. Um, and, and I like the fact that a guy like Franz Palermo has been given, been given an opportunity. I think Heineken's thinking there again goes back to the fact that you know, it's, it will be a tight game, it's a quarter final. Mm. You know, uh, I'm Kane's one of the best teams in the world. Uh, and what's important there is that towards the end of the game you need experience and guys like Yanni coming on, Adrian Strauss coming on, you know, Willem Alberts coming on, you know, uh, uh, Patrick Landry, they'll add a lot of, I think, experience and, and calm things down. I think it's going to be closer than most people expect. Wales ran Australia very, very close. In fact, they got over the line three times against Australia and just couldn't get, couldn't get the ball on the grass. Yeah. So um, they would have been disappointed with that result, and but they would have taken a lot of confidence from it. They're also going to take confidence from the fact that they beat us in November. Um, even if we didn't play our, our strongest team, I know deep inside that camp I've spoken to some of them, they have an inner confidence that they can do the job against us. They can definitely do it. I mean, Havana is on form, scoring tries. You know, we're looking forward to that record. Um, you know, Heineken Mayer today spoke with conviction at the press conference, um, saying that, you know, we're the spring box, we've got to win, you know. And uh, I appreciate that, you know. The, the, the coach has to lead from the front. Um, he took the loss against Japan on the chin, but going forward, I think we really are going to give the Welsh a good run for their, for their money this weekend. We're going to win. So for Mani Mkise there, that was uh, the uh, radio journalist that you saw last. Uh, he mentioned Brian Habano, who currently is the joint leading Rugby World Cup a try scorer. Well, you know that Habano's been called the Ronaldo of rugby by Welsh record try scorer Shane Williams. The former Wales wing said that Habano is a predator. He'll hang around rocks and he works off Pollard and Stain's shoulder. He really is what Alan Shearer and Ronaldo were to football. He is a predator. You give him an inch and he'll take a mile and that's why he's so good all right so as much as he warned his fellow countrymen what they'll be going up against and the man that they need to contain in tomorrow's quarter final they did say he can be beaten if the welshmen are clever enough well let's hope not because of course if brian habana does get over that try line it'll be another record for him all right Speaking about our quarterfinal, South Africa up against Wales. Let's hear what a 2003 Rugby World Cup winner Ian Bolshaw had to say about the upcoming match. Against Wales, yes, Wales have got a lot of in injuries, but they've managed to get out of the group. You know, they put in a spectacular performance uh, against England at Twickenham, came back you know, after being 10 points down. I think, though, the South Africans are just going to be too strong. Uh, I think just the physicality, I think the breakdown, I think the South African back row uh, is fantastic. Um, very powerful big ball runners uh, and I think actually having Matt Field and De Villiers injured you know, the two guys that have come in it sort of adds a little bit more to the team I think Creel is if he can get the ball as much as possible uh, and let him run uh, you know I think South Africa can be very very dangerous Thank you, Cool, for that match. is going to be 5 o'clock South African time. The other quarterfinal featuring New Zealand and France will also take place tomorrow. Kickoff in South Africa for that match is at 9 o'clock. And, of course, South Africa or Wales will face the winner of that New Zealand-France clash. On that note, speaking about the French, they come with flair on the field, but... In the stands, they also uh, have some very colourful fans. So after a France fan had his patriotism painted all over his face as he waited for the game against Canada at Stadium NK, we wanted to know which of the beards at the Rugby World Cup that you've seen so far have really impressed you. I mean, we've had Wales's Jake Ball, the movie is Peter Jan van Lille, but I think the favourite has got to go to Scotland's Josh Strauss. <laughs> oh, we have some very creative producers that are working here. What about money? Okay, so we've spoken about beards. Let's speak about the money side of things. Dan Carter, he signed a three-year deal with French club racing Metro, which is worth 4.2 million pounds in total. That's 1.4 million pounds a year, making him the highest paid player in the history of rugby. He will leave his native New Zealand club Crusaders after the 2015 World Cup and will join Racing Metro, which already has a whole list of stars with massive salaries. The best paid South African, well, he's sixth on the list, and that is none other than South Africa's Brian Habana. How much does Habana get a year? £474,000 per annum. All right, so just a little bit of fun for you as we say goodbye from the ABSA Red Bus. ABSA, a member of Barclays. We've been parked outside of the old 
Naval College and we'll be moving on to another destination here in London. So you've got to tune in tomorrow morning's show to find out. Until then, have a great Friday ahead. Goodbye.